morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. We'll start this morning with our scripture reading. In thee, O oh Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Deliver me in thy righteousness and cause me to escape. And incline thine ear unto me and save me. I read to you from the 70, the 72nd division, or no, the 71st division of Psalm verses 1 and 2. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning with bowed down heads. We want to thank you, God, for forgiving us of our sins. And we want to thank and praise you because you're a good God. We want to thank you for your word today, Father. We want to thank you for your protection and your guidance. We want to thank you that you led us here to the house of prayer today and got us here safely so that we can learn more about you and your will. We can learn to be doers beyond being hearers. Father, we just want to thank you. We want to ask you to bless those that are here, those that are on their way, those that are lost and can't find a way, touch them, Father, and let them know that without you they can do nothing. Father, we just want to thank you. As we go through your word today, we ask that you stir up the spirit, keep all minds clear, and let's go on through your word. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Our lesson today is entitled, Faith to Persevere. Coming out of Acts, chapter 14, verses 8 through 11, and verses 19 through 23. So we'll start this morning, go quickly around the room, and let's start. We'll start this morning with Sister Katie. She already done told me about her concerns, so we're going to get through the script. Amen. The 
cycle. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must through much tribulation and enter into the kingdom of God. And the end, Prince, verse 23. And when they had ordained them, elders in every church had and had. Fasting, <coughs> and to the Lord, on whom they And Colleen, would you share your granddad's book? And I want you to read the golden text. You can stand right there and read it. Exhorted. Through much tribulation. Amen. Our lesson today is entitled Faith to Persevere. And if we remember anything about last week, we knew that Paul and Barnabas were out establishing churches. They were going from place to place. They were teaching and preaching the word of God. And as they were out there teaching and preaching, some people listened to them intently, and some didn't go along with what they had to say. And that's the same thing with today. When we preach and teach the word, some people are receptive, and then some places you may go, and maybe in your own home, you meet opposition. So it's a, a big lesson here for us to learn as being believers and followers of Christ. So I want to just start at the beginning of chapter 14 and just jump through these verses very quickly to bring us up to verse 8. And here we see that Paul and Barnabas ministered in Iconium, Lystra, and Derby. And if you look at verse 2, chapter 14, verse 2, it starts out with but. And when you see a but, there always means that there's something that changed in there. But. But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren, against Paul and Barnabas. Always somebody in the mix. When you say, let's go left, they say, no, let's go right. Always. Look down at verse 4. We got another but there. But the multitude of the city was divided, and part held with the Jews, and part with the apostles, a division. And all the time now, Paul and Barnabas is still preaching and teaching the word, but they're meeting opposition. And when there was an assault made both of the Gentiles and also of the Jews, 
with their rulers to use them to spitefully and to stone them. So here the people are conjuring up plans to do the uh, teachers and preachers harm. They're conjuring up. They were aware of it in verse 6. The disciples were aware of it, the plans for people to cause them harm. And so they fled unto Lystra and Derby, cities in Lyconia, and unto the region that lieth round about, and there they preached the gospel. So regardless of what the plans were, it didn't stop them from their goal. They continued to preach and teach the word. And that brings us right up to verse 8 in our lesson. The first part, <coughs> excuse me, the first part of our lesson is entitled First Miraculous. Because we see in this lesson there's two miracles that took place. But in the first part, verses 8 through 11, is talking about the first miracle. It says, and there sat a certain man at Lystra, innocent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, who never had walked. So Paul and Barnabas encountered a man that was crippled. He had been crippled from the time that he was born. Remember in the previous lesson, might have been the first one, I believe, Sister West, the first lesson that was taught. There was a lame man there also, but it was Peter that worked a miracle. God worked a miracle through Peter. Okay? So here we see another circumstance that comes up, but this time it's Paul. So the same heard Paul speak. When, it's, when it says that in the ninth verse, it's saying the crippled man heard Paul speaking. Mm -hmm. The same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. So here Paul is sensing that this man has faith enough to be healed. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I studied this lesson, one point I got from this verse right here is that God prepares us to receive the word. He prepares us to hear the word. Everything that happens within us, if you allow the spirit to be in control, that's where the preparation comes from. If you in here in self, then God can't do nothing for you. You can sit here all day long and you don't hear a word that's being said. You leave out the same way you came in. But if you let the Lord prepare you, then he prepares the ear to hear. And he also puts the preacher or the teacher in tune to someone that's seeking. See, Paul knew by watching. You know, sometimes when I'm here, standing here, in the position of teaching, when I'm in the position of teaching, and I notice that I can't take my eyes off a certain person. I don't know if you realize that. But it's not me. It's I'm focused. You know, and every time I start to speak, Feet. My eye looks like it zooms in on someone. And maybe it's that person that is yearning to receive thanks. Maybe it's that, that person that's yearning to receive the word from me that day. So Paul was in two, and he could see that this crippled man was very attentive to what he had to say. And he said with a loud voice, stand upright on your feet. Just looked right at him and commanded him to stand upright. And he leaped and walked. Now you know that's a miracle. Yeah, leaped and walked at Paul's command. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted 
lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Lyconia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. This verse right here, you have to understand what is happening. Paul allowed God to use him to perform a miracle. But the people that were surrounding misinterpreted the miracle. And they were idol worshipers, worship other gods. And aside from that, in our teaching it says that they understood, um, and I'm going to bring it to you here, they, un they understood some of Paul's language, but they felt more comfortable speaking their own. So they were talking, and a lot of what they're saying, Paul didn't understand, but they gave that miraculous healing to their gods. They said their gods had come down in the flesh and healed this man. So let's look at the, in the same chapter, verses 12 and 13. Actually, start at verse 11. And when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voice to saying, in the speech of Lyconia. So you see there in the 11th verse, they're talking about the speech of Lyconia, the speech of their place where they lived. They were talking. The gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. And they thought that was Paul and Barnabas, that they were the gods, small g. And they called Barnabas Juniper and Paul Mercurius because he was the chief speaker. Verse 13, then the priest of Juniper, which was before their city, brought oxen and garland unto the gates and would have done sacrifice with the people unto their gods, okay? Which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes and ran in among the people crying out and saying, Sirs, why do you these things? Don't worship us. Paul and Barnabas wanted them to give the glory to God. He says, don't, we are, we also are men of like passion with you. We sin just like you do. Don't worship us and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God. That's what Paul's message was. Turn away from these idol worshiping gods and, and look at the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. Paul, he shows us that we should never take God's glory. Amen. Everything is attributed to him. Amen. The air that we breathe, mm -hmm. any abilities that we have. Right. When we get up here and share the word, it's, we're working through God. We need to give him the glory. It's, it does not belong to us. And Paul, again, had to straighten them out. No, we're not Hermes. We're not Mercurius. We're none of those gods. We're professing the living God. And, and he was right there at a time. You know, we talk often about missed opportunities. And this was another opportunity for Paul to straighten them out, to let them know, no, we're not gods. Mm -hmm. To God be the glory, the one that made the heavens and the earth and the sea. So when we see situations that come up, 
we are supposed to not miss the opportunity to share the knowledge of God, to introduce people to the living God. Because, you know, we can make an idol God out of anything. Mm -hmm. Our homes, our cars, our clothes, our children, our jobs, our positions, our money. We can make a God out of anything. But we need to know who the true and living God is and be able to witness to others about who that is. So Paul took advantage of the opportunity here and let them know, yes, you saw a miracle, but don't attribute it to me. I'm not your God. It's the living God that I represent. And everything that I do is through him. And that was his preaching. He was preaching to them about God, the good news. Any questions or comments here in the first miraculous? I, I notice <laughs> verse, verse 10, Sid was a loud voice. Oh, he wanted everybody to know. Oh, yes. He wanted everybody to know. That was one, one thing. And the other thing was perceiving that he had faith to be healed. Yes. You have to have the faith to be healed. You have to. And, and we, we were talking about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, your faith is what? The fa then Jesus said it many times. Your faith has made you whole. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus said that, it, it, this, this comes back to me saying that, yes, uh, we, we have to have the faith to be, and Paul saw the man's faith to be healed, mm -hmm. and he wanted everybody to hear it. <laughs> everybody to hear it. Yeah, he was bragging on his God. <laughs> yes, he was. And, and if you remember, last week's lesson was entitled, Faith to Discern. Paul had a discerning spirit. He looked at that man. He saw that that man was attentive. And he discerned that he wanted something. And Paul let God use them to give it to him, Sister Winston. When I read that part, the first thing that came to me was that um, right away you see that when they gave, when the guy was healed, he was on his faith. If you have the faith of a mustard seed on God himself, and when I mean, they did it, Yes, the people around him misinterpreted, but it seemed to me that neither one of the apostles changed. You're supposed to be, no matter what the situation is, you're supposed to present, go ahead, and no matter what it is, keep the faith that you have, because you can get shaken, and if your faith gets shaken, then you lose your miracle. Mm -hmm. But I can see they continue, and, and that's what our lesson is telling us. You want to go faith, in God, no matter what, I don't care who you're around or what the situation, you're supposed to continue in faith. Amen. And that's what persevere means. Yes, faith to persevere. When you persevere, persevere means don't give up. That's right. That's right. That's and that's what this lesson is about today. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Obstacles will come in our lives. We'll go through tribulations. You know, sometimes the foundation feels a little shaky. But persevere in the Lord. Because He is our strength. Yeah. See, when we persevere in ourselves, then we set ourselves up for a fall. Mm -hmm. But this is a lesson about God. It's a lesson about faith. It's a lesson about perseverance. So, and, and in the Christian walk, a lot of times we get shaky and we say, oh, no, I don't want to go there. Uh, it, that was too rough. You know, I, 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 thought, I thought I wanted to teach Sunday school, but no, nah, that's not for me. You know what I mean? <laughs> A lot of things 
can get in the way and cause you to lose faith. But as I always say, it's not about us. And and when when we get called to do something, don't you know God? He is the He is still the one that says, "I'll never leave you nor forsake you." You know, He's gonna be there. So. And if we truly believe that, then we can persevere. Right. We can go on. And I, th I bet every one of us in here, if we think back, you hear people say, when I look back over my life, right. and we think about the hurdles that we got, that we came over, right. you know, and some of them seem like we would never make it. You know, right. seemed like we would never make it. And then we look at today and we say, oh my God, I made it. <laughs> you know, when I thought it was so rough, you know, when I met opposition, when I was trying to get a job here and there and everybody was saying, we already, we're not hiring. You know, when I'm trying to possess something, want to get a home, you know, got to find out about how to uh, have credit or get credit and, you know, and know your credit score is not high enough, you know, and you just keep persevering and doing what you need to do, you know, you might have to change some things, you might have to stay out of the store and stop buying so much stuff and drop some of them credit cards and then eventually, you see your credit score creeping up. Right. You know, you learned how to put a little money in the bank and save. Right. And then you go and you get ready to get your house and everything goes through. And you say, Lord, right. now if, if, it's not for everyone. Some people live comfortably mm -hmm. in apartments. That's right. And some of us own homes and later when we become seniors, we give up the homes and we go back to the apartments. Right. Less, less maintenance, you know, but if we just stay on that straight and narrow, lean and depend on the Lord and, and try to do the best we can the right way, doors will open up for us. He says he'll make us the lender and not the borrower. And for that, a lot of us, that's a hard lesson. Because we said, Lord, I can't see it. This little bit of money I got, I could not lend anybody anything. But you got to trust in Him. And you got to do what He said do. He the one said, He'll open up the window. to be so much blessings poured out, you won't have room to receive. And if we don't even know where it's going to come from. A lot of times it's not where we think it's going to come from. Oh, God is good. Yes. Yes. So let's go forward now to the second miraculous. Starting at verse 19 through 23. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. And having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to the city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. Now it's a lot in this section. So we're just going to go right on back to verse 19. And it says that there came there or thither 
certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people. So you, you remember Paul and Barnabas were moving, going from place to place. But here we see that some people are following them. Yeah. Troublemakers <coughs> following them to start trouble. And they were persuading the people against them, against Paul and Barnabas. And having stone, I mean, they persuaded them to the point that, see, because remember I said some people were listening and hearing the word and some were against the word. And those that were against, they stoned Paul, mm -hmm. stoned him, and drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. And, and you know, I thought about this. Some of you know these thoughts run through your head. When we on our way to church this morning, and I looked up at Deacon Prince, I said, you know, we always hear what goes around, comes around. <laughs> I said, you know, it was Saul that was standing there when they stumbled. <laughs> 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 but he never knew those stones was going to be upside his head. <laughs> what goes around comes, you know. But there's a lesson to be learned in this. That was just a thought that crossed my head. But, um, <laughs> But they, they stoned him and dragged him out of the city, okay, and left him for dead. Verse 20 says, How be it, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up. He rose up. Another miracle, y'all. They stoned him. And, and I can't even imagine, but they said that was one of the worst deaths. You know, for somebody taking stones and throwing them and hitting your body, and they just threw them and threw them until you fell. And he had to be in pretty bad shape for them to think that he was dead. But he rose up and came into the city. And the next day, he departed with Barnabas to Derby. It wasn't his time. He got up. Got up. And went on into the city the next day. That's right. And when they had preached the gospel. See, he didn't just go, oh, look at my wounds. I'm all lumpy and bumped up. He just kept right on about his business. Went on to the city into the city and preached the gospel and had taught many. See, so when you're able to teach people and they can receive, they're able to work. If I'm standing here talking and talking and talking and nobody ever learns anything, you can't do anything. You're not equipped to do anything if you're not learning. I, you know, we go through these lessons every Sunday, and people stress so much about the words. Oh, I studied, but I didn't know how to pronounce the word. I look at them, I say, are you teaching? I say, are you going to teach? No, I'm not teaching. Well, don't worry about the word. Worry about the message. Can you read the scripture and get the message? Can you get the meaning? of what's in the scripture. Don't worry about the word, the name. If you don't know how to say the name, get the message. <laughs> and when you come here, then you're going to get some help. It's help here. That's what we're here for, to help one another. Mm -hmm. yes, it is. But if I can't help you, then what can you do? you got to come with a heart to want to be helped. Let Jesus use you. He'll work with your heart so that you can understand just like when Paul was there in uh, Lyconia and there was a different language he was able to understand that they were looking at him like he was a, one of their gods. He understood that. See, because God can fix it. 
so that you can understand. Confirming the souls of the disciples. So he were able to teach many, and then he returned those places where they had misused him, mistreated him. He went back. They said he could have went a different way. Mm -hmm. He could have went down there through Tarsus, through his hometown. But he said, no, I'm going back. Why? Because his work was not finished. He had to be an example to those people. He had taught them, he preached to them, and he had to let them know, you're going to come up against obstacles, but you need to persevere. He was a perfect example. They stoned him, they left him for dead, but he turned around and went right back through where he had come from so that he could get things set up and let them know that you're going to meet obstacles too. Mm -hmm. So here, in the 22nd verse, he was confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them, urging them to continue in the faith. When you say continue in the faith, that means don't give up. When you walk through the door and People don't look at you right. People don't speak to you. People say the wrong thing to you. People are insensitive to your feelings. Don't give up. Continue in the faith. When you're misunderstood, you say it one way, somebody take it another way. Continue in the faith and don't give up. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Now, I tell you, every time, we're always in a place in Scripture, but we're looking forward. We're looking forward to another time, another kingdom, when Jesus comes back. We want to be there and ready to enter into the kingdom. But if we fall short and give up, are we prepared to enter? We're not prepared. If we give up, are we going to be able to enter in? He's encouraging them. Don't give up. Continue in the faith that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Tribulations are obstacles. Tribulations are things that get in our way. They're going to come. When you stand for God, you're going to meet opposition. Don't give up. Continue in the faith. Things may not seem the way they should to you. They may not look, because that's what faith is. Faith is the substance hoped for evidence of things not seen. We don't see it. We don't see the full picture all the time. You know, we're doing things and we say, Lord, I know you said you wanted me to do it like this, but every time I try, something happens. He said, continue. Continue. If you keep going to this door and it don't open, then take a detour and go to another door. But don't give up. Because there's something beyond this world. And that's why we strive so that we can enter into God's kingdom. And that's what Paul was teaching them way back then. He set up the churches. He was letting them know things aren't going to be easy. The false teachers are going to come in. You know, uh, if you live in an area like that was, where they were worshiping idol gods, they had to give up that belief to accept the belief of a living God. Sometimes it's not easy to change, especially as we get older. <laughs> you know?
know, we've been doing it like this all our lives. Why do we need to change now? We've been singing old hymns all our lives, and there's nothing wrong with the old hymns. But sometimes saying something new is not, it's not going to change anything if we change things a little. As long as we do it unto the Lord. See, change is hard for some people. And we struggle with that. Stay on the Lord's side. And when they had ordained them elders in every church. See, Paul and Barnabas was doing just what the Lord was leading them. You got to have leaders in the church. Somebody that's going to help. And somebody you can go to for advisement. Somebody to encourage you when things don't seem right. When you come in here and ain't but two people sitting in the congregation. You need encouragement. When everything you do seems to turn wrong, no matter how hard you try. Don't you know we have to learn, all of us, that we can't please people. Okay. Okay. Have you ever been in a position where you tried? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did it always work? No. No. <laughs> but we have to learn that. Uh -huh. Do the best you can. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's right. And if they walk away unhappy, that's on them. Because oh, yeah. some right. folks you can't please. Right. Right about that. There's a lot of unhappy people this season. This season. You know why? Because they don't know that Jesus is the reason. They don't know that. And they're striving for everything besides. That's where the gods come in. The kids, they done spoil them so with all these toys that they think they got to have. I look at the young folks, they have these birthday parties, but you know, my nephew had a birthday party for his one-year-old daughter. I said, what did this child know about a birthday party? And you're spending money. You know, it, it, it's, it's saddening. If we gave as much love to one another, as all this other stuff we try to buy and shower on people. I don't care if you give me 15 gifts. It's not going to make me any happier than if you gave me one. And maybe if you didn't give me anything, but give me some love. See? And people don't get it. If I go into all this debt, trying to please everybody and giving them something, then I'm unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. I want to meet that happy medium where all of us can be happy. That's right. So, as I said, a lot of people this season got a lot to learn. Because I've been drawing back for years now. And, I, and I'm right where I want to be right now. The grandkids, I love them. The great grands, I love them too. And that's what I got for them for Christmas. It was a whole lot of love. I hope they can accept that. <laughs> and if they can't, then I can't please them. And I'm not going to try. I can give them God. I can let them know about Him. The Word. Because that's what's going to endure for them. So we got a lot of lessons to learn here. But the 23rd verse says, And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they committed them to the Lord on whom they believed. And that's who you got to believe in, is the Lord. They prayed and fasted. They did everything, a perfect example for us to learn 
to have faith to persevere. I looked at um, John, I want to see a couple of uh, scriptures with you all before I close. And I looked in Gospel John. Chapter 8, Gospel of John, chapter 8, verse 31. Is it John 8, 31? John 8, 31. We're talking about faith to persevere. And it says, everybody got it? Amen. Then said Jesus to those Jews, which believe on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Persevere. Continue. Jesus told his disciples that. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. You're my disciples indeed. And that's for us, just continuing this word. That's what it's all about, the word. Give that to somebody for this season. Share the word with them. I have a, a cousin that lives in Indiana. Never laid my eyes on her, ever. And I met her because years ago, a few years, she was trying to invite me to a family reunion when she found out that we were cousins. And the reunion was called off, so we never met. But we would talk to each other on the phone. We knew we had the same relatives. And so she lately has started calling me. Before we would talk maybe once or twice a year. But lately, she's been calling me like twice a week. Yes. We're truly cousins, okay? <laughs> she called me more than some of my family members, and I love that. But she was telling me last week that she had got some bad news, that her grandson had been diagnosed with something she didn't say, because she was tearful when she called. And she said he had six months to live. And she said, I don't know, but I just felt like I needed to call you. So I'm listening to her on the phone crying. And I said, well, you know what? I, I said, uh, does he know the Lord? She said, no, he don't. I said, well, you know what? I think you got your work cut out for you. I said, first of all, don't listen to what the doctor said. Because he can't tell him that he has six months to That's live right. and know that. That's right. I said, but whatever time he has, you take every day as something special. I said, and you got time now to introduce him to the Lord. I said, use the word. I said, start reading the word to him. Help him to build his faith. I said, tell him how to get saved. And I said, where are his parents? She said, his son lives here with me. I said, does he know the Lord? She said, no. I said, start at home. Teach him about the Lord. I said, he'll be able to go through whatever he's going through a lot better than he is now. See, this is what we have to do. When they, we, sometimes we sit back and we miss the opportunity. All right. She's there with her son in the house. And his son is the one that has been diagnosed. Share the word with him. Mm -hmm. right. Introduce him to Christ. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Get him saved. Amen. I said, that, and you'll be able to sleep a lot better too. Mm -hmm. I said, because that's what our hope is for all of our family, our friends. We want all of them. Hey. If I'm going somewhere and it's as good as, as I've learned that it is, I want to take everybody else with me to enjoy it. 
So when you talk to people and you find out they don't know the Lord, share the Lord with them. Share the, 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 the Lord with them. And, and since I'm going to get to you in a minute, okay. because I have one more scripture that I want to get in, and it's coming out of Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. See, we have to know these things. When we're stepping out for the Lord, we have to know that we're not by ourselves. 28, 28, chapter 28, okay. Matthew, verse 20. We have to know that we're not alone. I'd rather have somebody with me a lot of times. And if I got the Lord with me, I got everything. So Matthew 28, 20 says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded to. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. See, we need to know that. If we're believers, we belong to him. He belongs to us too. Because when we started talking about the crippled man, and I went and I'm looking, and I found out we was crippled too. That's what I found out. We was just as crippled. Because here in my book it says, spiritually, we all are crippled from birth. As there is nothing we can do in order to save ourselves. We can't do nothing. Just as crippled as he was. I never thought about it that way. But that's the truth. Crippled. We are dead in our sins until Jesus saves us. And Paul undoubtedly was preaching the gospel when the crippled man, in Jesus' words, had ears to hear the message. Just as the word brings our spirits to life, the word brought this man healing. Sister Winston. That's what I said. <laughs> also, I like to be uh, introduction also because it said on here many years ago, Christian College Choir did a tour, and when the Soprano Solis developed laryngitis, mm -hmm. near the end of the concert was the climatic piece. And this piece she was supposed to sing. Mm -hmm. And it said her name was Donald. She participated in the concert by simply mouthing most of the words. Mm -hmm. And when it came time for her solo, the director looked her way with a questioning face. She nodded, so he, she proceeded to give a downbeat, and the choir sang. Donald performed exceptionally that evening. Afterward, she walked up to the director and whispered, my voice is completely gone again, like it was before in the concert. Through her solo, God was again exalted and glorified. But as soon as she had finished, her laryngitis returned. Mm -hmm. We serve an awesome God who is able to come out and assist us at any given moment. Mm -hmm. He does not always respond the way we wish he would, mm -hmm. but on occasion he gives us a glimpse are his miraculous power. Yes, and that's what he did. Yeah. In this that's he right. Did that's everything. what he did. Uh -huh. And Paul experienced that many times. Many times. Paul was jailed. You know, he spent a lot of time in prison writing letters to different churches that he set up. He didn't give up. Even when he was locked up, you know, he never gave up. And one time in scripture he said that he wished he could go on, but he said, no, nah, as long as I'm here, I'm going to do the will of the Lord. Right. And so, a perfect example for us, faith to persevere. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And when you need a little bit of encouragement, then you find a sister, a brother in Christ to listen to you and somebody that will encourage you to keep going. Don't give up. And with that, we're going to ask uh, Deacon Prince, who is so attentive to his book. All right. If he was damn and dismissed, please. Go ahead and follow. 
Lord, once again, we come to you, Lord, and ask you to forgive us for our sins today, Lord. And we thank you for another good day that you have made, Lord. Continue to, continue to bless the teachers, Lord, and continue to open up our hearts and our minds so we can receive the word of God. Lord, bless all these blessings. In your son Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.